Hello, Scott. Hi, Scott. Hello, Hi, hello. Scott. Oh, my screen hey, Scott. is Brent Trout, yes. but it's David Fish. Wow, <laughs> good to see you. Cousins together. <laughs> It's been a long, long time. John Bruder has a very nice background. <laughs> yeah, that's we actually just came in from a hike. It's oh, that's right good. nearby. I want you to see. It's okay. I can see. Hi, Aunt Sue. Hi, Brenna. Hi. I feel like you guys should put best Mondo bread. A little competition going here. That went in Leslie. <laughs> Where were we live, but I can't tell. Okay. I'm high life. They're recording. <laughs> and I haven't seen you in a thousand years. You didn't see you a thousand years ago. No, I didn't. Someone talked to you. It's less than five. It's less than two. I'm recording, Rabbi, but I need to flip. Are you familiar with this? It's. Oh, and there's the cemetery. Okay. Hi, Brenda. Can you see Hi. us? Who's saying that? It's Rosie. Oh, yes, I do see you. Hi. Yeah. Okay, so that's. I see what you're saying. It's not sitting there. Right there. Oh. Oh, okay. Hi, Rosie. Yeah, maybe down here. Yeah, well, because she's at the cemetery. Oh. Is, it, is that Rosie Heim? Yeah. yeah. There we are. There we are. There we are. Okay. Folks, we're going to begin services. We're going to ask everyone to silence, to, to put your phones on mute, please. We're going to begin services momentarily. We're going to ask every participant to, to mute their phones. Okay. Family. What an unusual way for us to gather today to remember Lila. What a difficult way to say goodbye, but I know that with all of us um, concerned about health, that this is probably the best way we'll be able to do this. So I want to share with you some of the words of our tradition at this moment as a way of helping us to appreciate the psalmist's concern to give us comfort, even in this difficult time. The psalmist wrote, Esayinai al-Haharim, me'ayin yavo esri, esri me'imadonai ose shamayim ba'aretz. I lift up my eyes to the mountains, what is the source of my help? Help comes from the eternal maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. Hold the protector of Israel, neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm and protect your being. Adonai ishmor tzeta ha uboeha. May the eternal guard you in your going and your coming, now and forevermore. Psalmist reminds us, is Morla David, Adonai Roi Lo Ansar, Vinot Desha Yarbitseni, Almeim Nukot Yinachaleni, Nafshi Yishovev. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Make me lie down in green pastures. Lead me beside still waters to restore my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. And when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Rod and staff to comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the eternal forever. Death has summoned our beloved Lila May Wagenheim. Our souls cry out unto you, O God. 
what are we? Are we the creatures of dust whose destiny is but to return to the dust from which we came? The ancient sages taught us the spirit of the human being is the lamp of the eternal. Not even the darkness of death can extinguish the light which the eternal has kindled in the sanctuary of the human soul. Therefore, O oh God, we thank you in the solemn hour for that which was deathless in the life of our cherished Lila, and which is now revealed to us in all of its beauty. For her love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, for her companionship which we shared along life's path, and which still continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of her heart and of her mind, brought us joy and happiness and now have become a precious heritage of the spirit. For all these and more, we give you our praise. Grant unto us, O God, the strength of all the generations of our people who in the face of bereavement proclaim, Adonai Natan, Adonai Flakach, Yehishem Adonai Mevorach. God has given, God has taken away, Still, blessed be the name of God. Reflecting on the Torah portion of this past week, the week in which Lila herself passed, I wanted to draw your attention to the very name of the portion. It's called Kayek Sarah. And although it literally means the life of Sarah, it's in fact about her death. This is to teach us that when we gather to mourn a loved one, it's not their death that we dwell upon, but rather their life. A further lesson is derived from the opening verse of the Torah, which gives us Sarah's age at the time of her death. While the text could have just said she was 127 years of age, Instead, it tells us she was 100 years and 20 years and seven years. The rabbis comment on this unusual construct. Some rabbis discern from this unusual way of giving her age that she was as beautiful as 100 as she was at 20 and as youthful and playful in her old age as she was at the age of seven. Others contend that it is because Sarah lived her life in stages. Her childhood was quite different than her early years. And then her transformation as she left her home to start the Jewish people represented another fully formed stage. Then her last 100 years are as the mother of the Jewish people. What a fitting tour portion for our beloved Lila May Wagenheim. Even as we are grateful that she died peacefully at Menorah Park, Having spoken to her loved ones that morning, we take inspiration from the way she lived her life. Hers was the story truly about living at every stage of her 95 years. And like our biblical matriarch, Sarah, this family matriarch, Lila, was as beautiful at the end of her life as she was in her early years. And she found joy throughout all of those years. She remained elegant and stylish, even when others around her may have given up on such amenities. More than that, Lila lived her life in stages, defined by the events that shaped her years. Her childhood years gave way to becoming a wife and mother, a time of widowhood, and a time of later of grandmotherly and even great-grandmotherly love. In various stages, in many cities for different periods of her life. Lila's life is a testament to the strength and courage and resiliency of life of 95 years. As the portion is called Kaye Sarah, let us take a few moments now to reflect on Kaye Lila and the life of Lila. Born in 1925, Lila was the daughter of Sarah and Leonard Bruder. And along with her brother Robert and her sister Suzanne, she grew up in University Heights. During Lila's final years at Heights High School, her mother worked at the canteen. She met a handsome, nice young 
man serving his country. He has an act of kindness to feed a young soldier, or with an ulterior motive to fix Alan Wagon Knife up with her daughter. Sarah invited him over for a family dinner. They would be married when Lila was just 18 and Alan 19. Alan would then shortly be shipped off to fight in the war. Upon returning, they would begin their family. First with Les, then seven years later came Sue, and then four years after that, completing their family with Randy. Lila tried to manifest the quintessential Norman Rockwell painting in their home. Always meticulous in her dress, even to making sure her earrings and bracelet matched her necklace, she embodied the matriarchal part. Supportive of her husband, Lila was a dedicated wife prepared to follow her husband wherever his work journeyed as they went, as he continued in the dairy business and later the supermarket field. Like the story of the biblical matriarch, which meant moving from place to place until finally settling in the land of Canaan, over the course of several years, Lila made her move to Youngstown, and then the family moved to North Miami, then back to Highland Heights, and finally when Alan opened the general hardware store, Lila created a beautiful home for them in Beachwood. Especially after setting down roots, Lila and Alan shared beautiful times enjoying each other's interests, which were wide and varied, from collecting antiques to camping to boating, and even enjoying horses on a farm. Along the way, they collected paintings of birds and American Western and Native American novelties. They enjoyed these adventures with the warm group of eight to 10 couples who kept their lives filled with fun and adventure. For Lila and Alan, the adventure cut short after nearly 37 years with Alan's passing in 1981. Lila would date again family, why would I want to do that? I already had the love of my life. The family would remain critical in bringing joys into her life. Lila managed her home with a strong sense of appropriateness. Not to cut away with being a boy, Lila was a little harder on Sue and Randy on the girls. Still, it was the home where your friends enjoyed gathering because there was always sure to be some of Lila's delicious baked goods around, especially her signature mandel bread, which made its appearance at every occasion and was shared with neighbors and even the police officers nearby, and perhaps still fills many of your freezers to this day. Also known for her bunt cakes, Lila was a good baker and a cook. So that Sunday night family dinners around her table were always an adventure in the latest cuisine. And that's where a lot of memories were made as she welcomed you and your significant others. For Stephen, especially those dinners were a time of expanding his palates from the traditional Ashkenazi Jewish foods to her Julia Child restaurant worthy Italian delicacies. And while Lila wanted to keep all of you near her, when Les moved away, he did not leave Lila too far behind. He loved coming to New York City to visit you, and you delighted in showing her off and taking her to some of the new restaurants and through the fashion forward stores. Having worked in fashion herself, especially enjoying her years at the designer dress department at Saks, Lila appreciated the stores and the time with you. For Sue, while she might encourage you to put on some lipstick, she admired your courage to build a new life. And she was there for you and the kids at every turn. And as the years transformed your relationship, you were there to guide her through her moves and to make sure she had everything she needed just the way she liked it. I was amused by a story that you told that amused all of you. The fact that she liked her pants dry clean even the ones you'd select for her from Chico's, which purposefully were meant to be machine washable. Still to satisfy her, you'd launder them at home and return them to her on hangers wrapped in, the, in plastic as if you just picked them up from the dry cleaner. 
some things were just easier to do her way, apparently, and to just let them go. And for Ron, as your support, you, at, you were the support for Sue and ready to support Lila in every way. You both added great quality of life to her years. For Randy, the baby, Lila had a soft spot. Similarly interested in fashion, Lila enjoyed that Randy had picked up some of her traits of always being dressed with a little flair and of course, never leaving home without her lipstick. And when Randy became ill and passed away, Lila was devastated. Lila's loss of her husband and her daughter at young ages impacted her outlook on life. Yet she continued to thrive through her grandchildren. With each of you, Lila started the conversation in the same way, asking what's new, how's business, how are the kids? But she listened to your answers and gave you what you needed as best she could. With Rana and Brooke, there was that most memorable trip to Israel with your grandmother. For Allison, Lindsay, and Alex, it was the fantasy of Disney World that you shared with her. And she made it even more special because she already had trouble with walking long distances and her wheelchair got you to the front of every long line. For Aaron and Alyssa, the Saturday night sleepovers were special times when you could watch movies and enjoy delicious waffles in the morning. For all of her properness, however, she let you watch some pretty age inappropriate movies. She came to adore your spouses and her five great grandchildren from near and from far. What a joy to see her generations expanding and another chapter in her life bringing her new joy. I can see Lila in my mind's eye at many family bar bat mitzvah ceremonies at our temples and weddings all along the way. Always elegantly dressed and engaging, she drew your eye and your heart. She was like having your personal fashion consultant along with you for many of you as you prepared for those occasions. She did that for you and for her clients at Saks and prior to that when she worked in fashion at Laplace. People adored Lila and trusted her opinion. And while she knew fashion, somehow knitting the latest sweater for you never quite worked out the way she envisioned. Indeed, sleeves were disproportionate or the wool too itchy to wear. Even her afghans had issues, too small for baby blankets, too short to cover lesser's feet, or not quite a rectangle to use as a throw, but nonetheless made with love. Still, it was those odd-shaped blankets that Lila made by the hundreds for the city mission that endeared her to many. People would drop off large quantities of yarn for her, and Steve would call her weekly to determine when she had a bag full ready. In recognition of her generosity and skill, Lila received beautiful letters of gratitude and even was celebrated in the Menorah Park newsletter for her kindness. She had other hobbies and interests as well. A voracious reader, she enjoyed recounting the stories for you. She loved animals, especially her dogs and cats, and she even made friends with the animals in the backyard, going to Heinen's to pick up the bruised apples so she could toss them in the backyard for those animals through the winter. Sweet and caring, Lila was able to rise above her own difficulties to care about others. She had a couple of accidents over the years that left her quite debilitated at times and in great pain, yet she never complained. Instead, she was committed to living life to the fullest, and that included meeting a special man in her later years. Ken Yard and she were devoted to each other. His kindness and loving attention helped her to enjoy a beautiful chapter of love and romance. A testament to this special time in her life, Ken's daughter, Claudia, may have earned the title of favorite daughter status for staying close and remaining attentive to her. That was the thing about Lila. She engendered loyalty and she appreciated the attentiveness of those who made a point of staying close to her as she did with them. Whether it was with her machatonim, the parents of her children's spouse, her clients, or extended family, 
Lila was good company, filled with lively conversation and curiosity in everything you were doing. That was as true these last months at the nursing home. She found ways to reach out to you on FaceTime and through virtual technologies like this. It's hard to imagine what liberties COVID has taken away from these relationships. Without our biblical matriarch, Sarah, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of recent blessed memory also described in his book, Judaism's life-changing ideas, what we learn from Sarah. He wrote, to survive tragedy and trauma, first build the future, only then remember the past. For Lila, having lived through the depression and through times of war, the premature loss of loved ones and her own health challenges, the necessities of quarantining certainly added another difficult trauma, another tragedy and trauma to her chapters. Still through it all, she remained the quintessential matriarch, holding you all close and being held close by each of you. She survived tragedy and trauma by building the future for each of you. I think Rana summarized Lila's memory as a matriarch best with these words. She wrote, I just want to say how special she was to me and all my good memories are from family dinners at her house on Strawberry Lane. She taught me to cook, bake, knit, and be a nurturing person. Her legacy will continue throughout my life and pass down to my daughter, Sarah, as we practice her beloved craft of knitting, her love of birds and home cooking. She will always live in my heart. You see, she was indeed planning for the future. When you each reflect on memories of Lila, let it be to take comfort and courage to meet the challenges that life may drop on your lap. And certainly do so with a piece of mandel bread and a cup of coffee at hand. May Lila's memory forever be your blessing from generation to generation. at home, I'll ask you to rise as we ask God to welcome Lila's soul with the words of our tradition with the El Malay. El Malay Rakami, Rokain Babaromi, Amen Khan and Hona Takan and Bad Tifina, Ikirokim Utehorim, Zohar Harakia, Asirin et Nishmat, Lea, Bat Abram, Basara, the Hakala Olama. Baha Rahamim Yasbireha Vesetra Kanapavla Olamim. Bitswar Bitswar Hakaim et Nishmata. Adonai Hunakalata, the Tanua, the Shalom Amishkaba, the Omar Ame. O compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Lila May Wagenheim, Leah, daughter of Avram and Sarah, who has entered unto eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence. Let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. Guide us her inheritance. May she rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
family, we're going to join together in the Kaddish prayer. I just want to remind you, the Kaddish prayer is this amazing ritual of our tradition. It's a prayer that sings God's praises, even at a moment when we would really want to desecrate God's name, taking a loved one that we cared so much about. But it reminds us that the hand that lifts us out of our grief is still the hand of God. So we use these words through the generations to help us to remember and to help us to sanctify God in Lila's memory. We join together. Amen. The miracle is ended. The precious soul returns now to her maker. May God comfort you along with all the mourners of Zion and of Jerusalem. Amen. Okay, on behalf of all the family, I'm going to invite Steve to place a little bit of earth on the casket. Let's see if you wouldn't mind. It's our way of offering a final moment of, of doing something that can never be repaid for us. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for being here. We can stick around a minute if you want. That'd be great. Is, are there two? Hey, Alex. Should I put a second? I think there's one I can put. I think if we could have two, sure. it would be okay. less and for less and for Sue. Okay. They, there are two houses. Hello. Hello. Hi. 